Hello and welcome to Behind the Bible with Pastor Liz. We're talking next Sunday about Elisha and the healing of Naaman, which is an especially interesting story and has lots of ties to modern Christianity like baptism and what makes a person impure and what does God require from us. But today we are going to talk about leprosy. Now, leprosy is an interesting disease. All of us have these visions, I think, of lepers as people who are in a colony, who are uh, away from the world and isolated away into a leper's colony. Hawaii, for example, was originally a leper's, not originally, but was used as a leper's colony. And so people were taken out of society and put into these leper colonies because it was believed that leprosy was a highly contagious disease. It was a highly contagious disease and that it eventually resulted in pieces of your body falling off, just, just you know, rotting and falling off, which is pretty gross. But it turns out that's not actually what leprosy is. So let's talk about some facts. Leprosy's modern name, modern medical name is Hansen's disease. And Hansen's disease causes patches, little skin patches all over your body. Um, it starts off with one or two patches, but it spreads over your body. And they're scaly patches. So leprosy, the word leprosy comes from the Greek lepros, which is scale. And so when you have leprosy, what it really means is you have scaly patches on your skin of your body. And they're, um, they're discolored. They look gross. They just look gross. Um, they look like if you've ever had a mosquito bite, they just look like big versions of mosquito bites that have scaled over. And they're hyper, what's called hyperpigmented, which means that it has whatever your natural skin color is, it has a lot more of that pigment in the scaly part of it. Sometimes it's red, sometimes it's white, but usually it's just a darker version. It's like having a scaly freckle, a big scaly freckle, because they're, they're, they can be big. And a person can have leprosy for five years before they show any symptoms. It takes a while for this disease to incubate, to spread into your body. Leprosy is not highly contagious. Leprosy requires you to be near someone for an extended period of time. I think it comes from the nasals, like when you sneeze, but you have to be exposed to that for a long time. And I also read that 95% of people who are exposed to leprosy, the bacteria which causes leprosy, don't get it. That even when you've been exposed to it, when you've had the right amount of exposure bacteria on your skin, that 95% of people don't get it. So there's obviously some form of a genetic component. Now I want to go back to that part where it's not contagious, or not highly contagious. People were put into leper, lepers colonies because it was believed that it was easy to spread. Now, it's not. And in modern medicine, it's easily treatable and with some antibacterial antibiotics. Uh, there's a three drug cocktail I read, which you can take and cures you within six months of your leprosy. Leprosy does not cause pieces of your body to fall off. What leprosy does is it deadens the skin. So you don't have any nerves, any sensation underneath of where the scaly part is. And so often people who have leprosy, especially back in the day when you would walk barefoot or you didn't have great hygiene, would get infections in parts of their body that they've cut. And they didn't realize they cut it because they couldn't feel it. And so that would be what would cause pieces of the body to, to eventually fall away is the infection, the secondary infection, not the leprosy itself. So how did leprosy come to be a byword for infectious, for dangerous, for get him away from me? Well, it's because of who leprosy affects. Generally, leprosy affects people who are in high situations of poverty. If you were to find a leprous person today, you're going to be finding them in places like India, Asia, Africa. It appears in Europe and America, but it's usually treated pretty quickly. But in those, those places where there's not access to medicine, not quality medicine or good hygiene. And so those places put the lepers off to the side in the belief that they were dangerous, that they were marked as impure somehow, that they were dirty because their diseases showed up on their skin. And so it was something that you hid as long as you possibly could. Something you put under clothing, you tried to keep people from realizing that you had it. And it's so easily treatable. 
And I think about today, all of the ways that we have things that we think make us lepers. We carry around all this shame. We carry around all this guilt. We carry around all this baggage because we feel that we are in some ways lepers that are disease, whatever it is, is contagious. And some of them are. Like, we have a contagion of fear happening in our country. I don't know how much you kept track of the rainbow, fe the rainbow fentanyl situation. There is a new strain of a high of fentanyl which is a highly dangerous drug which is rainbow colored it looks vaguely like sweet tarts like a tie-dyed sweet tart from the pictures i've seen and so there was this contagious belief of fear that people were going to sneak it into your kids halloween candy and this is only the latest of many of those fears my husband and i were talking about all of the things the razor blades people were putting in apples when we were kids which of course was an urban myth that never happened or people putting marijuana in brownies to give out to kids just to be mean, I guess. Some of us are afraid that if we admit that we have a disease, that we will be afraid that people will be afraid of us. I've got a friend who has cancer and she was talking about how people stopped talking to her because they were almost afraid that cancer was contagious. Or, what about our mental illnesses? Some of us have depression or anxiety or other things that we hide because we're afraid that people are going to be afraid of us, that we are going to be treated as lepers. Jesus in the New Testament goes around healing lepers all the time. It's one of his favorite activities so to restore them back to society. I wonder what it would look like if we could hear those words for us and hear our, heal ourselves give ourselves permission to admit that we have this not so highly contagious disease. It's pretty normal that everybody has some sort of baggage, something, some secret shame that they're carrying around. I wonder what it would look like if we could say that we're not gonna put ourselves, self-select ourselves into a colony or enslave ourselves to fear, but accept the healing that Jesus offers. We may never get rid of the leprosy, never get rid of the disease, may we never get rid of whatever that baggage is that we're carrying, but we can be free of the shame and the stigma. And we can take our antibiotics or our medication or whatever it is and not have to hide it or be ashamed. Jesus offers us that healing to restore us back to society. God bless.